Hello everybody, this is Magmar here and um, this is going to be the first part in a series where I uh, teach you how to make melodic dubstep. The song I'm going to be using is mine and Cass Gobi's remix of um, uh, Avicii Waiting for Love. Um, yeah, so this episode's going to be about uh, mainly the um, drums and the bass. So let's start off with the drums. Uh, the main drums are in the drop, it's just a standard dubstep like kick and snare. Okay, so the kick, you want to be choosing one from uh, the one with a very fast attack and it's quite big. Now, uh, the, the way I fake my kicks is I use, well, I, I always start off with a saturated with Soto Foy with a soft clip turned on. That means it's not clipping and it's been saturated. Uh, with this particular kick, I boost it at 91 hertz because that's what that's where it peaks. I take out some of the mids and boost it to the highs again to give it that like nice click. Uh, I've also used the Native Instruments Supercharger Compressor, which I got free actually, which is very nice of them. Uh, with a th 3.6 compression punch and uh, both enabled with a very 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 wet mix and the 1.4 decibel boost on everything. Uh, the snare is from the machine sample library from Native Instruments. Very nice snare. Uh, I've boosted it at 167 because that's what the peak of the snare is. That's a hit you in the chest snare. And I've put um, X for OTT on it which is an upwards downwards compressor which is very very good for making things sound bigger. Uh, I've reduced the depth, boosted the time, uh, moved the upward down a bit, left it downward the same and boosted it by 1.3 hertz, left all the multi band shit the same as well so it's all nice and um, I've added a tail to the snare, I've, I've literally got a vengeance sweep sample and moved it up halfway through so it's qu quite quiet and not so sort of turbulent added a fade to it and transposed it up 7 um, yeah so it's, it's a nice nice sort of um, and I've also added an attack for the snare which is a fast thing at the beginning just to sort of make it more punchy That you've got that, and then that's all being glue compressed with a slight makeup. All of this left the same threshold down a bit at 40%, so it's parallel compressed, which means that you have a uh, unaffected signal being mixed with a very compressed signal. This makes it sound quite fat and big, which is nice for dubstep drums because they're all well, kicking the snare anyway, because they're gonna be the loudest thing in the mix, they're gonna be holding it all together. Um, in terms of percussion, uh, what I like to do with dubstep is I like to get a sort of deep house perk loop like this. If I was to slow it down to drum, uh, deep house tempo, it's a sort of chugging, chugging um, uh, uh, deep deep house percussion, but at, it works perfectly fine. At, dubstep tempo and it works really nicely with drums and it gives it a bit of a shuffle. Nice enough beat. Um, and yeah, I've used that throughout the entire song and it works very, very well. So I, I know it's a bit sort of cheeky and sort of shortcutty, but I mean, I change something if it sounds good. Uh, I've taken out all the low ends. I've got rid of the high ends, a tiny bit, uh, dips a tiny bit of the mid out. Refurbed it a bit, compressed it, and just limited it. And yeah, it adds um, a lot of sort of groove to the drums, makes it not so static. It sounds terrible without it, actually. But yeah, it's, it's, very, it's very nice. Um, the two different patterns I have for the drop, I have a. Um, I've had it done with so that it works perfectly with the actual chords so the chords go like duh 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 and the kicks goes duh duh kick kick snare 
Whereas in the intro and everything else, it's uh, fairly like. Yeah, just just down the first and third beat, which is this standard sort of drum pattern. Um, in the build up, there's a, another snare which sounds like this that um, is building up with a sort of increasing frequency. So yeah, uh, there's also a transposition uh, envelope up here that I've automated so it goes up in pitch. Um, and also it is also mixed with a a slightly quiet version or a version with less velocity which is uh, quite good for stuff like this because it adds more impact to each hit of this uh, I've added a sidechain hit at the beginning oh yeah yeah um, with with the drums I like to have a separate sidechain channel so it means that I can have a uh, sidechain dips, dips and there actually isn't a kick there and I can have a sidechain from the kick and the snare because in house and everything, you, you, you usually have a four on the floor kick, which means that you can sidechain from the kick because you want to sidechain from that. Whereas in dubstep, you don't have, or you don't usually layer your snare with your kick. And it means that you can have a sidechaining on your snare, which is very important, as the snare is the, probably the biggest drum in dubstep, the most important one. Um, I've added a few uh, little... Uh, uh, like breaks, I suppose. Snare rolls, which you can do by getting a snare, duplicate it out so it's quite quick, so it's like a and then building it up with the velocity. It's quite a way of doing it. Um, yeah, oh, um, back to the build up thing. Um, always have your big snare about either a quarter or half a bar before before your big drop because it adds a massive amount of impact and you, if you drop everything else out it just adds it, it, it adds a moment of sort of clarity and big expectation it makes your drop sound a lot bigger um so yeah it's a thumbs up for the fucking terrible <laughs> I mean, it sounds alright, but it's a bit cliche, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, so that's the drums. Um, then for the bass. The bass is only really present in the drop. I made it in silent. Um... It is just a um, sign of saw with, with two octaves down, a bit of a filter with a bit of drive going up. No, no effects at all. It's just a very bare bones uh, sign saw bass. Um, again, my saturated synod void with the drive up to make it sound fast. Uh, it's EQ to take out a lot of the highs and a bit of the low uh, mids, so you get your main bass bit. Uh, the autopan's here because of the second drop where it uh, goes a bit stabby. <laughs> then it's um, uh, auto filtered for these bits so that you can um, Water filter up when bit when bits that shouldn't have any high end in don't have any high end in it's fine, and you can bring it in for the drop bits where high end adds a nice harmonics. Um, it's got utility reducing it by minus one point seven, and it's compressed. Uh, that's about it for the bass, um, and it works quite nicely with the rest of the synths. The the the, the main aim of bass in melodic dubstep is to 
make it sort of pump and add a big the the the, the tonic of the chord you're playing at the bottom to really secure it. So with the chords. <laughs> Yeah, so with the actual chords, you're aiming to sort of ground them and make them really big. But we'll uh, go over the chords next time, I suppose. Um, playing just the uh, drums and the bass together. They, they, they work really well together, sort of glued nicely. Uh, you can achieve this through side chaining it uh, an absolute shit ton. Um, but with a um, short kick, as, or, or with, a, with a short thing you, you're, you're side chaining it from. So um, the thing I'm side chaining it from is just the main kick. So it's very short. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just the same kick as this one. So it's very. It's quite tight and small, which means that when you side chain it, like a ri like brick wall side chain it, um, it only dips for a second, and it means it fits very, 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 very well with your drums. Anyway, um, thank you very much for watching.